Good evening and welcome to the um, September meeting of the Historical Commission. Um, about literally two thirds of our, well, three fourths of our members are here, plus our supervisor liaison, who hopefully will join us soon. Um, he is missing. Um, we need to approve the, the minutes. Did everyone get that, those minutes from? Right, yep. I had actually corrected before I sent it out a little, just something typo that uh, Barbara made. But other than that, I thought it was, they were very well done and compliment Barbara on doing some great minutes, but it does bring up the question, like who's going to do the minutes tonight? Joe, are you in Vermont? I am in Vermont, yes. Oh, could you do the minutes? That would be good. I'm about this, to have a cat fight here. Because it's easier know. to do minutes in Vermont? No, okay. no, 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 no. Go away. Shh. Shh. Go away. Oh. Do you hear that? <laughs> Guys, go Very away. Very loud. So I, I, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not super loud <laughs> yeah. on, on my end, at least. Okay. We have one, one left the room, so we should be good. They'll fight in the hallway. Um, <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> so um, you're making a motion, James, to approve as as written. Um, yes. Yep. Okay. Um, I, will sec I will second that motion. Great. Okay. All in favor? There's, there's. We have a quorum, so that's that's good. They pass. Okay. Um, regular business. We have. Um, there's really no plans. I'm looking at various things here. But there's no plans from Jim. Um, let's. Uh, that I received, but I did notice that there is a, <clears throat> a zoning hearing board meeting sign on a 19th century house on Sandy Run Road. Um, so presume, and it says that they're planning a um, four unit development. The house sits very close to the road, so I gather that that means the house is planned to be removed if they're going to be sticking um, at least two large joined units and make four units out of that lot. Um, and I don't know what the rest of the neighborhood would feel about that, but um, it, you know, it's just something that's going to be happening more and more often in our townships. So um, I, I, will, I will pen an email to Jim uh, Majewski about it and to see whether uh, we should make a comment. I know that the house on, on Sandy Run is definitely on our list of houses built before 1890. So uh, as to when exactly it was built, I'm not certain at this point in time, but um, I'm sure it's before 1890. And I don't know what the current Board of Supervisors feels about Victorians being removed. Um, I, I have a question about that. Um... Did it say anything about demolition or was it? Um... I, it's just a sign about the development. I haven't seen the plans at all. Okay. So that's a, that's a very valid question. Um, I just looking at, the, it's a very narrow lot that goes all the way through to the other road that is the, um, that is the road that borders the golf course. <clears throat> so I would expect that if it's going to be four units, it's going to be very difficult to keep that house. But who knows? That might be, I might be pleasantly surprised. And and uh, an existing front on Sandy Run Road um, could never be duplicated because the setbacks today would force a new building to be built further back. So you might be right. They might, might be saving it. Let, let's hope so. But um, at this point in time, I don't know. So um, you're, you're gonna, you said you're going to pen a note to Jim just regarding yes. making him aware of the age and, and significance of the house? Yes, and, or at least voice the fact that, so the supervisor, our whole purpose is to educate our board of supervisors so that they should be aware that it is a, a 19th century house okay. um, and then make appropriate decisions. Okay, okay. looking at the rest of the um, agenda from this meeting, um, Slate Hill Cemetery is ongoing, Octagonal Schoolhouse. I know Barbara has been discussing um, with the Wiener family, but I don't know uh, anything else. I know tonight might be a difficulty for her if she's got CCD um, or she just might have something else going on. Um, 
local history. I really could use some suggestions for the web page because I'm sort of out of out of mental mentally out of uh, sync with it right now because I'm dealing with a lot of um, speaking engagements, which are a good thing, of course, but um, and they're out of the, even out of the county. So um, I'm not really uh, focusing too much on on doing that. So if anyone has a suggestion, I can certainly do some research and pull some things, but I just need some like direct me, give me a focus to go for forward. Which, for which website? This is the Facebook page. Oh, for the Facebook page. Okay. Right. Yeah, which I'm still managing. Yeah. Um, I just noticed the other day that we've had another like 25 hits on it. So I know kids going back to school, they're starting to think again. And I still have not put up the slides that I created last year for the history of the township. Mm -hmm. So I have to figure out either we redo those and make a presentation out of them and put that up on the site, or I start doing what I did with the Civil War soldiers, like putting in three or four and commenting on them and then continue the three or four new ones and comment on them. I could do that as well. I don't know what you would think would be better. I think, you know, we had talked about having you do a, a webinar, right? Yeah. Where you would just do the presentation of them. We could record that. And then I think we can make, we can make that available. Yeah. You um, mean at, on the township site or on the Facebook page? On the Facebook page. Okay. Yeah. yeah. James, if we, I, I don't know if you know, like if, I mean, I know we can get onto Zoom and we can record the, we could record the webinar. Um, but if we recorded it, could we, Upload it. Like, how would we make it available on the Facebook page? Because who, 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 where would we host a recording? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, th that web page would host quite a bit. I mean, it it does take. I noticed it, it takes certainly pictures, um, docs. It takes probably would taste to take a small video, but I don't know how long it would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we could do a, um, we have the Google Drive, we could always. Um, we could always do it there, you're right, you could put it there. Yeah, but then, but then that would be difficult for Jim, because, well, we could create a new, a new folder that they, that would link to the public that they could well, see. I on think the web. you, can, yeah, post, we could do you hmm? can post a video to Facebook. Um, okay. That's, uh, you can also upload to the townships. Um, you can also upload to the townships uh, YouTube page and yeah. link. Oh right, that, yes, you can do that at YouTube. Post it okay, my voice is considerably better, so um, that is a good thing. And um, so the presentation is on the is on the history of Lower Makefield Township. Well, it's it starts with Native Americans in the township right. and talks okay. about about the changes made by the confrontation with the first Dutch and Swedish settlers coming up the the river and how it changes the um, dynamic of the indigenous people's tribal customs right. because now they're trading with with settlers to. Um, give them something they want, namely furs, for something that the natives wanted, which was mainly metal and uh, weapons right. and alcohol. So unfortunately, um, once contact is made, their, their own tribal structure starts to deteriorate even further um, just by nature of human nature. Yeah. Um, so that I bring up, and then I also talk about how they fish the shad and they and the eels and what they hunted in the woods and what kind of houses. And, you know, I did a sort of Lenape typical um, uh, layout, but taking stuff from Churchville and some other centers that have lots of cool information and and actual um, recreations up. So I just created slides with those. Um, took a lot of stuff out of uh, pan archaeology and uh, temple archaeology about the Scudders Falls. And um, that's about it. And then immediately start talking about the first uh, forts down near Morrisville on the river. And then, and then again, go back to William Penn and Penn coming and actual real settlers coming up in the six, early 1680s. So right. 
you know, just it very quickly switches to that. But I thought kids should know something about the indigenous peoples and often what they're told is not quite correct. So I thought I'd, I'd, I'd try my hand at it and see what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and they seem to really, I mean, they love that part because I should, there's really good drawings out there on the internet uh, showing shad fishing, showing the drying of the fish and, you know, the, the underground reservoirs for food and how they shared the long house and, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So why not just take, take it up? Uh, I actually started as an anthropologist at Penn way back when, James, but, but um, switched to, to history later and then colonial history um, when I came back after having a bunch of kids. Um, so yeah, so I never, but those those things, I love anthropology and I love that that kind of um, uh, relationship with, with human beings and how you can see the same things happening in other indigenous cultures around the world. And it, it, they pretty much do the same thing. It's really, it's really kind of neat. Um, so anyway, all right. Well, so I'll work on that too. Uh, what else do we have on? And now so it's Joe's presentation. So what would you, what would you want to do? I mean, is it a half an hour presentation? Is it? What, you mean for the Keystone? Oh, you mean no, for no, me? No. Uh, yeah, probably yeah. half an hour. Yeah. So, so I'll just do one. I, I've already divided up the slides into pre-colonial, you know, early colonial early 18th century, mid 18th century, late 18th century, okay. early 19th century, mid 19th century, late night, you know, exactly. So there's about all together, I can make between 10 and 12 presentations. So we could ask the township if they'll schedule a, um, a Zoom presentation for us, right? We put it onto the Facebook page, you know, so people can join live and they could ask questions and things like that, but then we'll record it. And after yeah. we record it, like James said, we can either load it up onto Facebook so people have access to it, or we put it onto the township's YouTube channel and then they can have access to it from there. And then you're right, Helen, then anybody who's going into you know school next year can go and, yeah. and, and, and start, You'll, they'll have it there, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think that would be good. Um, I feel bad that I only shared it to the Edgewood school last year because my granddaughter happened to be there, but um, right. yeah, the rest of Pennsbury school district should see it too. I'll follow up with um, Katie and see if we can get something scheduled, okay? And what, well, maybe, what would be great about YouTube is it it's much easier for educators yes. to go in yeah. and right. like they can even, you know, make a link that will just have a certain amount of time that is shown. And they can, yeah. if they're doing a unit on, you know, maybe you're talking about how um, it's like their house structure. The, like the long house, then they can just clip that and assign it to students. Yeah, uh, that's a good suggestion. And I geared it to basically fourth graders because in, in most of the public schools, Pennsylvania public schools, fourth grade is where they learn local history. So, yeah. Okay. So, all right, but I'll now we, to get that to get that set up and then we can go forward. Okay. Okay. So now it's Joe's presentation. Want to see my presentation? Um, well, you have something about Keystone. I do. I do. I do will. <laughs> uh, I thought take, you, you said you share my going... screen. I did. Let me just share my screen here. Can you share your screen? Mm -hmm. And I can do this. Can you see that? Yeah, Mike, we can see it. It's great. Okay, good. So let's go through a few slides on the on the Keystone Grant. So, um, just kind of an overview at first, right? So the it's, the grants are really meant to help preserve Pennsylvania's historic resources. Um, I say help because they you'll you'll, you'll see that they require matching funds, um, but and they are targeted more towards the historic resource than other resources. There's two project categories. There are construction grants and the construction grants, and I'm going to go through examples of projects here. Uh, but they are anywhere from $5,000 to $100,000 match, right? So they require a 50-50 catch match. So the projects themselves have to be between $10,000 and $200,000. But there's also planning grants. And the planning grants are interested, especially based on some of the things that Helen's been talking about around how we handle certain neighborhoods like, um, like uh, Westover. 
Um, so they are much, they're smaller, five to $25,000, but they still require a 50, 50 uh, cash match. Now the applications are normally due on, on March 1st of the grant year. So we're coming up to the 2022 grant year. So it is now a good time for us to start thinking about are there topics that we want to, to, to submit on it and who is gonna work with us on that. So eligibility requirements, there's two, uh, two things that are required. So first of all, the organization um, needs to be a nonprofit organization or a public agency and has to be supporting a, 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 um, a publicly accessible historic property. Um, it could be the local government. So Lower Makefield Township as a municipal, municipality can actually apply to Houston grants. And when I've looked at the types of grants that have been issued, actually most of them have been issued to municipalities. It can't be a for-profit company and it cannot be an, and it cannot be an individual. But then the property, um, if it is a better property, right? You know, the property must be listed in or eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. Um, again, it, there are some that in Lower Mexico that are already listed in. Um, there's probably a lot more that are eligible for. If we don't have an eligibility certificate from the state within the last five years, we have to apply for one and that takes about 30 days. So again, if we're gonna apply for a Keystone grant, we gotta start planning it because we're gonna, we might need to get um, eligibility certificates renewed. Um, the other requirements, the building should be open to the and accessible to the to the public, or the grant has to be um, such that it helps that grant to be available to the public. So I don't know, especially of the township owned buildings, I don't know how many of them are actually available and accessible to the public. So well, I think probably the AOY house on Patterson Farms right. would fall into that category. Would fall into that um, category, yeah. The, the Patterson Farm Preservation Group has really not finalized what they would do with that property. There is a, there is a split on that board about uh, whether it should be public access or it should be a curatorship with some public access to a part of the building. But mm -hmm. I think they, they generally feel that it should be um, open to the public and I think they could get the 100 days pretty easily. Right. So the priorities for the funding, um, it's, you know, again, property that's visible in the community. Um, it should be historical or architecturally significant. Um, if we should focus on preservation or restor restoration. So right. it's not a matter of expanding the property or something like that. You're either preserving it or restoring it to it. Right. You're not just paying the rent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, letters of support from the public or it, that it offers the public benefit. At, or it furthers the goals of the statewide pres preservation plan. And applicants in certified local governments receive bonus, bonus points with a letter from, from the municipality. And Lower Makefield Township is a CLG, so that, that helps us. Well, the Edgewood Historic District is the CLG. I don't think the whole township is. No, because um, CLGs, I, are, gover sure CLGs are, are governments. They have to be a municipality. Uh, well, I'm I'm not sure how that's listed, and whether the whole township would count, or it's just for projects in the Edgewood district. But but that would be an interesting point, Joe, for them to yeah. The township is, is you know yeah. So let's look at so construction grants, right? So these are construction grants. I mean, they're obviously very uh, property oriented. It could be site work. It could be masonry, doors and windows. Um, thermal moisture protection, accessibility. So you, I'll show you some examples, but there's a lot of projects that are focused around improving accessibility, especially with ADA, right? And um, new construction or reconstruction, however, are, are not eligible. But I thought what's also interesting is the planning grants. So the planning grants are actually set up um, to be done before the, the, right. the, the construction grant. You do a planning grant, you get, you, 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 you get some specifications out of that, then you apply the next year for the, for the construction grant. So the planning grant covers national register nominations, either of a historic district or individual properties. It could cover stewardship planning projects, such as a historic structure report or condition assessment or architectural plans and specifications. So this would be obviously be on an individual property that we were looking at. But there could also be community planning product. Um, 
And like Helen, you've talked a lot about Edge Hill and Westover, right? And you know, the fact the, the, of their historic significance and what are we going to do about preserving those, right? So right. this is looking at identifying strategies, priorities, and tools for historic places or developing design gu guidelines. And archaeology projects or even cultural resource surveys would be covered under under a planning grant. So planning grants don't necessarily need to be focused on an individual property. Um, construction grants obviously are, but these can be these can be much broader than that. Okay. Well, you know, that just kind of tickled something in my mind. Um, I've been all, already been in just in discussion with um, uh, Ms. Tolbert from the Traffic Commission and talking about the octagonal schoolhouse site and the, the archaeology, the planning for what could happen to that site um, could actually, you know, fit in also with the township planning for creating some kind of safe crossing for the people that live in um, Regency to get right. to the shopping center. That's going to be some kind of an issue and maybe the township could consider making a grant to some planner and uh, some firm to actually look at that whole area and design something that would really benefit the, the gateway into lower makefield that's that's yeah, where that I mean, just jumps out right that is that's a that's a good idea of a project i mean what's there yeah. is no longer the schoolhouse but the foundation you know so what what could we do in order to not just preserve that but make it you know and a, a place where we're educating the um right. the community about the schoolhouse and not only the schoolhouse but you know how education was done in the 18th century yeah and and definitely some kind of safety structure um or pavilion for people that want to cross and get there in a yeah. safe way and there is i don't know whether i don't know if that would fit though here well, accessibility could be important. Right. Accessibility, right. From an accessibility point of view, you're right, James. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But definitely the archaeology would be awesome. And then the maybe even rehabilitation plan, if that could be possible. I don't know. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Well, and making it, making it publicly accessible with um, to maybe providing money for like a plaque or some sort of like Thing where we can put a picture of what it used to look like there and and having it be a bit more outward facing mm -hmm. than it is now obviously <laughs> well whatever the planners come up with i think that would be the the, the top thing and, and safety is always going to be a huge issue with that particular corner but interesting i think it really is a, a site that could be of um of certainly of statewide importance because of the early date of the abolitionist society meeting at that schoolhouse um mm -hmm. and and the fact that it is the earliest example of an octagonal schoolhouse so architecturally significant as well i think that fits the bill for because wasn't yeah. that didn't you say something there was uh like furthering the goals of the state yeah we have to i i didn't have a chance i mean i have the plan download it but you're right and that so that is one of the pieces of the um uh, one of the cornerstones of the plan is to look at, you know, for underrepresented communities, you know, and how they're, what, how they're being portrayed and 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 their history, you know, local history. So yeah, that could be also put into here. So hold on to that thought because I have some questions at the end to go through that. So the planning grants are interesting. I mean, there's I think a lot of things that we can do with them. A lot of things that we've discussed here as as, as a commission, you know, can kind of fit into that. So we would need to work with a design professional or contractor or planner, as, as you said, Helen. Um, you know, the project would require professional professional oversight. You know, it would need to, so we would need to be working with someone who would be able to give us a, a a quote on that. You know, and then we need to be able to get you know half the money from the township or some other or some other resource. I gave, I just brought up here a few examples and I can give you this, you know, the website. They, they, unfortunately, they stopped listing them around 2015, right? But I went back and started looking at what were some examples of, of awarded grants. And you can see, you know, here, the first two were two, munici were two municipalities. One was to, um, 
you know, actually install an air conditioning unit. And they, they argued that that would improve the year round viability and, con and continued use of a, of a historic property because it would have proper cooling. There's a number of them, a number of grants that were given um, on accessibility for, you know, meeting ADA requirements. Um, this one was actually used for looking at windows in, in, in a house and restoring the windows. And the third one down here was looking at pretty much redoing most of a structure and the structure was going to be used by the Crawford County Historical Society. So it kind of gives you an idea of the types of things that, that they've approved in the past. And there's a lot more of these. Yeah. So for us, you know, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, I asked is which, you know, if we wanted to look at construction grants, which township owned buildings are or could be national register eligible or are already part of the Edgewood Historic District. I remember one of the buildings, James, that I think you're, the special committee was looking at um, up by the shopping center, by the, I think by the giant shopping center is already in the Edgewood Historic District. So that was, it would be eligible, you know, for a grant. You know, are the buildings open to the public or would we plan to open them to the public? Um, do they meet the priorities? You know, which organization can provide matching funds and submit it? Would the township do it? Are there other are there other nonprofits? One oh uh, five oh one C threes. I you 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 mentioned um, the Friends of uh, Patterson Farm is. Um, we do we know what's going on with the historical society yet? Is that going to still be a viable entity? No, I, I've got to uh, get myself together and call that woman. Um, yeah. That is a big priority to get the other 501c3 up and operating. Uh, if the township is not going to work with Patterson Farm Preservation, then we need to have one that they can work with. Well, and, Patterson uh, Farm is their own 501c3, right? Yeah, or yeah. or we start a new one. You know, I mean, basically, yeah. Um, yeah there's there's, you know, the Pricket Pricket Preserve could have one. Um, the, the house you're talking about is the Hoff House. Unfortunately, Joe. It has been so modified, I doubt it would ever be eligible for National Register. Right now it's contributing in the district and it is cited as a historic house, uh, but in the rebuilding of it, first of all, they took off half of the wooden structure, which had been done in the 19th century. And then the decision was made not to rebuild the porch where it should be, which would be on the street front mm -hmm. and put an opening in the end, gable end of that house. Right. So unless we decide to take off that um, kind of monstrosity on on the end and actually reopen the porch to the street and probably a back porch as well to the shopping center, um, I don't I don't know what else you could really. No, do I mean that. it's a contributing structure to the district, so that make so that makes it eligible already. My question yeah, is simply though, by is, being you're right, so is it, it, open it to would the be public? eligible to do that, but I doubt we could get a whole bunch of township support for that, but. It might happen. Who knows? Um, definitely, the Patterson Farm is already deemed eligible for the National Register. We may have to renew that. Mm -hmm. Milner Associated, uh, Milner and Associates did it when the uh, bypass exit from then 95 was constructed, and because it was taking it, taking part of that land, they had to do an assessment, and they deemed it um, eligible. So Milner, we have a really Bonafide, where any any structure on the Patterson Farm is eligible. Mm -hmm. um, the golf course house uh, was cited as potential on the 1980 windshield survey by the Heritage Conservancy. So I think with with the new connections we found with the Slack family and one of the Slacks probably within part of the rowing party that took Washington across the river. I think we would have a pretty good um, shot at getting that one in based on on the that kind of relationship. It was certainly was there during um, the American Revolution and um, someone who lived in that house contributed to that momentous uh, crossing. Um, so the Patterson Farm Group does have funds now and they could certainly help with 501c3. Um, especially the money goes further if the 501c3 actually takes over a structure and does it themselves because then um, they can get bids for labor that are cheaper but 
Um, if the yeah, township but, does it, then you're looking at union wages and your you, you money. You have to pay the Pennsylvania prevailing wage anyway as part of the rent. Yeah. So I don't think that's going to be. Okay. Yeah. 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 They, they, they mentioned that a lot. But that that's an issue. I know that the money goes quickly when you're paying those kind of, and you can really right. only get one grant. You know, the, you're not going to conceivably come back and ask for a second. Although right. we have in the past. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe we can do that again. Okay, what do you, what's? I, that was pretty much it from that. I mean, so the question it. simply is, do we, what do we, are there ideas we would like to develop? Well, the other planning idea is to create another, another historic district in that area. And that's going to require that the supervisors agree to it. And we start with a survey of the homesteads in the proposed district and get some feeling as to whether there's any support from the local residents to create Edge Hill Gardens as a separate um, sort of historic district in the township. Um, it, it was it was a, literally, as I said, the very first planned development in Bucks County. It's number one in the planning book. Um, it comes with all kinds of strange caveats that were put in, like no tanneries and, and other kind of really upsetting um, requirements of, of what kinds of people can purchase in, in Edge Hill Gardens, et cetera. But it's part of our history. And it was the oldest, as I said, the oldest planned development in the county. And I think it's 1922. So we are, that's approaching its, its hundredth year. Um, at this point. So those houses are almost 100 years old. That doesn't seem possible when you look at some of them, but they are. And um, their architecture is really quite amazing because there's a number. Of, they, they were purposely representing every possible style from the from the colonial period through uh, colonial revival in the 1920s. So just everything, arts and crafts and Victorian, there's even Tudors in there. I mean, there's everything in that Tudor revival. They, they would, I could call it Queen Anne. I mean, there's everything in that one district architecturally. It, it could really be spectacular. And when you did, you, you were involved with the Edge Hill, I'm sorry, that um, the Edgewood Historic District, right? Yes. And when you started that, how did you start it? Did you... We hired a, pl a planner. We hired, um, and the, there are several in Bucks County, there are several firms, and we actually worked with Carter Van Dyke. And mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Marshall actually put in a bid and the Heritage Conservancy also worked with us on it. Right. So um, so planning planning is done by a number of different companies and you know they draw the lines and that, that these houses are in the district and these are contributing if they're, they're not quite fit into the style where they've been added since the, the district started um, yeah. and we didn't, it, so so basically it's it's a process and it, it actually goes pretty quickly. Once you hire someone, um, their plan was done within six months and uh, and then it, it kind of um, was, was approved. The, the township, it requires township to change the zoning. So they have to advertise, right. they have to have hearings and then that zoning district is set up. I was Just gonna say, how did you gauge the public support for that? Because that's going to be one of the issues here. So, like, how did you know? How did you know that the people in Edgewood would be okay with allowing uh, it? Carter and Jeff personally talked to all the owners in Edgewood Village. We were very lucky because basically one person owned literally three quarters of the district. So once you got his consent, yeah. it pretty much goes. You know, it slows downhill from there. Um, and there were certainly benefits within that zoning for the the people that that um, that were be well basically involved in it because putting that historic zoning implies some some onus on yes. on, them, on the uh, people living there. Exactly. So you have to immediately build into your district something that's going to incentivize people to want to do it. So it could come with with anything from tax breaks to, you know, some kind of honorarium with the house in that district, some special plaques, some special flags, something. 
you know, mm -hmm. whatever, to make it obvious that they are within a special district and right. hopefully improves their property values. Right. Yeah. I mean, if I'm sure you go buy it too. I mean, they have their own, you know, signs, you know, hanging out, you know, for Edge Hill Gardens and things like that. So they, they do maintain that, you know, this, this kind of separate entity when you, when yeah, you, when and, you drive and by it. We did try it before, as I said, this is not the first time this has been um, raised, but that was back in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And um, we did a more ambitious, instead of just doing that area, we did a more ambitious historic houses all over the township. And that was probably a mistake. Yeah. It would have been better to just do that section where there was a really, really strong support for that happening to that area because it's so close to um, the borough of Morrisville. It mm -hmm. would definitely improve, I think, the, the importance of that district. Right. So we have that as one topic. We have the orthogonal schoolhouse um, as a second topic. Are there other topics to, to, to think about? James, are there any topics from what you, you mean to apply for, to apply for grants? Yeah, um, I think the ad hoc committee is probably going to be coming up with some right. suggestions, particularly about the um, the, the buildings on the set on the Patterson farm. And also, you know, there is also that golf course house that is steadily deteriorating and could certainly use some TLC. So add that in, Joe, uh, the Slack house. I, I think that um, the sense that I'm getting from the uh, ad hoc committee is that the Satterwaith um, house is the one that is in the most dire shape. Right. Um, and I think, honestly, I, I think the $100,000 maximum might be a little low, like a little low to do the work that needs to be done. No, it's two hundred thousand dollar project then. How hundred thousand? Oh, project. okay, okay, okay. I wasn't sure if that was like the total price of the project. Okay, that might be a bit more reasonable. Right. But right. Um, the only issue that I can think with that is like accessibility. Um, because I'm not sure, like, if the township's going to put all that money in, um, to do something with that. Like, honestly, there's there's just no plan on what to do after with right. the property at right now. So I don't know if committing to making it publicly accessible or whatever that means, or putting it on the historic registry um, are things that the, uh, that the committee are like ready to commit to now. Um, but this, this is definitely something I'll bring up. Uh, we have another meeting next week. So. Okay. Um, we did, this commission did run the restoration of the Tomlinson store when the township owned that. And we actually did hire contractors and supervise uh, removal of 19th century um, stuff that had been done inside the house and then restoration. Uh, it got a new sh uh, shake roof and then the whole thing, all the wood, Exterior wood was um, scrape painted, and then all the windows were redone. I mean, all of that was done by this commission. Um, we would have to be a lot bigger <laughs> in order to get that kind of thing done um, today. But a 501c3, as I said, I think can stretch, especially if they have volunteers that are capable of doing uh, supervised reconstruction, that might be a much better way to go for the township um, but that's my opinion but ultimate use yeah if you're we're taking that kind of money that came up when we got the funds in 2004 to re put a new roof on that structure and put uh, gutters and downspouts and redo the front porch that it would be open and then the township kind of reneged on that so that is a problem and um the problem with the house is that even though it is already handicapped accessible in the rear part of the house, you can could literally roll right in in a wheelchair. Um, the problem is that uh, 
the rooms are not laid out in such a way as to be useful for much other than big meetings in two rooms. And if there's a really steep staircase, the second floor wouldn't be utilized, the third floor wouldn't be utilized, unless there's some kind of curator living there, which then impinges on their enjoyment of a house. So I don't know how that could be separated, divided. And again, bathrooms are a huge issue in that house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, there's there's a lot to be done. And it's, yeah, exactly like you said, the the house is divided in a very strange way. Yes. Um, and I, I guess the one thing, like the, the having something like a historic uh, uh, designation for that building, it wouldn't um, wouldn't prevent you know redoing the inside of the house at all to maybe like um, knocking down some of those internal walls. Uh, to open it up a little bit, but I don't know. It it's a it's a tough puzzle. Yeah, because... most of them are structural. Most of them are yeah. actually stone or structural walls, so it would be really difficult. Um, however, you know the, the the front two rooms and the pocket. There's a pocket door in between two the other two big rooms. They were that house was known as the wedding house because so many weddings were held there. So it is possible, but it's uh, as I said, the, someone would have to solve the issue of modern, convenient, handicap accessible bathrooms on the first floor. Uh, someone would have to figure out what to do with the back corner of that house is actually the oldest part and has a stone wall that faces toward that barn. That is actually a stone wall with a fireplace in it, a walk-in fireplace in it. And um, there's a cellar underneath that half or that little back section. Uh, the, the middle section is actually from the 1730s, probably, or 1760s. It's, it's that vintage. So, um, you know, there's just so much that could be done. There's stairways that go up there as well as the stairways in the front. So there are two means of egress to the second floor, um, which means that maybe if you designated the back two rooms as either private for the person that's a curator upstairs or for the public conversely and um let the other person use the rest of the house uh, you know there's a couple of ways to figure out what to do uh if if the patterson farm group got it i think they were actually more interested just in having a room to meet in in the back and the um use of the of the sheds and barns for demonstrations of historic woodwork and stuff like that was what what part of the vision was there to have um, um, kind of a craft, uh, do-it-yourself kind of, you invite public to come to um, de basically demonstrations of how to do restoration on their houses, um, which was an interesting idea. So that was another part. I mean, I'm not going to solve that problem here, but um, you know, there are there are a couple of ways that the house can be used other than going to sort of commercial lease or something like that. I hope that helps. But I mean, even going to commercial lease would open them to the public, right? And, and make them accessible, available right. grants. I mean, I guess one of the things, and you, same thing with the Slack house, it's, it's, they're sitting there, but they're, they're sitting there empty, right? And, and there's no pretended use, for, you know, use for them. So I think that's, that's what's hurting. Like if you look at the second criteria, are they open to the public or would they plan to? I showed you in this grant here, right? That they were repair, they were restoring a, an old house, but that whole house was going to actually then be the headquarters for the for the historical society, right? right. And public archive, and then people will be able to come in and they'd be able to, you know, you know, interact with the historical society or have exhibits on the history of the township. But I mean, they were. It was a public use, and I, th you know, I think one of the questions that I have, and I don't know, James, that how much you guys have discussed this, is for all these properties, are, are they starting to look at intended uses of them? You know, exactly. Yeah, that's that is um, that's what we're starting to look at now. Um, so, what we've kind of concluded is there are recommendations that we're going to be sending about um, immediate needs for 
you know, preserving structural integrity, uh, ensuring that, you know, buildings that are not historically significant and pose a danger to, you know, like they're, they're just dangerous buildings. They're, they're, that those are um, not being prioritized, right? Um, but that the historic, preserving the historic buildings are. And then now um, we're, we're starting to look at intended uses um, for the buildings. And the Slack House, the Slack House certainly has, I think, more potential um, for commercial usage or public facing usage than the, the Satterwaite, uh, Satterwaite House. Because um, the, uh, the Slack House, um, honestly, the first floor is, is not that bad. Um, and it's, it's very big, it's very open. Honestly, it's a, it's a great venue, um, considering it, it's located right on that, uh, right on the, um, uh, the golf course. Of course. Um, yeah. And it, it also has a big back patio as well that I think part of it is pretty new. Um, I'm not sure when exactly they did that, but there's a, there's a big patio space out there that I think they might have been using during the pandemic for, uh, for outdoor events but not sure. That house was the mayor's house where it had a fly-in kind of, it was known as the Playboy Club of uh, Laura Makefield Township back in the mm. 50s and 60s. That It has a beautiful retro 1950s kitchen complete with a indoor grill and an overhead metal um, hood. It's, it's unbelievable, some of the, it had some of the best materials put in in the 50s and some of that should definitely stay as part of the history of the house that said um we have often discussed in this commission that that would make the perfect bed and breakfast or tea house or something yep. that goes that doesn't conflict with the golf course use so mm -hmm. we're trying to think of things that could be used um there's tea houses um that are really kind of popular especially in the center part of the state um that just serve breakfast and tea and um, invite little girls over for their doll parties and things like that, that actually I have a go. But the, the other part of that house is the person who owned it um, really understood modern. So he created bathrooms for almost every bedroom, all the way from the basement to the attic. There are bathrooms with every mm -hmm. room in the house. There, which is there, a lot of them are in disrepair, though. Um, oh, terrible. Yeah. But, but. But come on, there's a turquoise bathroom and there's a yellow bathroom, very 1950s. And a lot of that's super popular. So I know people who have been in there who have said that's totally restorable. Um, it would be, if you actually sold fixtures from that, it would be snapped up, but just leave them, you know, we, we could definitely restore so much of them. You know, it has one of those, one of those bathrooms had the, 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 the faucet that actually the water comes out and folds down over the front of the top. It's unbelievable. Really lovely. But you're right. I mean, it, it's, it would require some maintenance from, uh, but again, that I see that as a curator, somebody who is a curator could live in the top story of that and create a fabulous bed and breakfast. Anyway. That's my opinion. Um, well, I couldn't, I couldn't can talk anybody into it, but maybe somebody else can. Um, that And being located on the golf course, we had had a discussion with the golf course leadership and they were all in favor, especially if uh, we uh, marketed it as sort of a place that cross country skiing could happen in the winter. And, you know, you'd have access to the golf course for dinner and Perhaps golf parties could stay there. You know, they were all for that, but they don't want to do it themselves, which makes sense. All right, so there's plenty of others. Um, there's um, many pieces of architecture in the township that are not owned by the public. Um, so um, we really can't fit any Keystone grants for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, um, but I think we're going to need supervisors' support in anything that we go forward with, Joe. So do we want to make a presentation of this to the Board of Supervisors? So I think we, yes, I was hoping Dan would be here. Um, but 
let's, we have a number of ideas and I'll put those ideas in the minutes, but I mean, let's see if we can maybe just get down to a couple of them and, and develop them out a little bit further. Okay. Like now that we understand the prerequisites we need to meet, you know, um, I mean, like the octagonal schoolhouse, we have the problem that actually we don't own the property or the township doesn't own the property yet, you know, so there's a lot of things to resolve there, you know, but let's maybe pick two of these ideas, kind of write them up. And then, yeah, let's talk to the supervisors and say, we should, I think just as a matter of course, we should be doing this every year, you know, I mean, at least applying for grants, you know, whether we yeah, before March. Yeah. 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 So, so we will be happy to do that. When is your commission um, at the ad hoc committee ended, James? When's the next meeting? No, when, when is it your report supposed to come out? Um, so we were going to do an initial presentation. So the, uh, they wanted an initial presentation by September, I think September 1st, initially it was, but um, that the board of supervisors communicated to us that that's a very soft deadline. Um, so, uh, back at September 1st, we only had like four members, so we barely had a quorum. Um, and now we've just gotten another member. Um, and so we don't really know yet when to, when we're going to present something to the board of supervisors, um, but I'll let you know if we come up with any dates, any specific dates that we're going to do that. Well, it really depends, you know, what direction you're going to be recommending to supervisors, how detailed we can be about applying for a Keystone grant. But that's basically, um, I would appreciate it, I guess, if, if you hear that you're definitely going to be going in one direction or another, you'd let us know. And then we could, Joe, we can tentatively do, you know, restoration plans for the Satterthwaite house or, or as the, the top priority. I know the major issues there are going to be the, the heat and electric, um, which, you know, obviously the township's probably going to handle the remediation of any of the lead or asbestos, the, the way that they want to handle it. So that's going to be, uh, probably part of their matching grant. So anything that they do on it will match our Keystone application. Right. I mean, my my thinking is that for the properties that the ad hoc committee is looking at, the best thing that we can do is just educate them as to the availability and the requirements of the grant. Right. And then right. The, you know the committee is going to need is going to need to figure out, you know. Are they ready to go with you know construction grants or do they need to have planning grants around those properties and things like that um i think helen will probably will, where we could add value is things that the committee is not looking at like what you talked about with the schoolhouse or you talked about with edge hill gardens right i mean there's other the history is not just what's owned by the uh, those buildings that are owned by the township right so we could probably generate some of our, our own ideas in that area right you know? although the planning grant would be nice for um as I said, I, I know how to do it because we've done it before. Planning grants would be nice, yeah. I mean, but I'm saying for, for the, I mean, I don't, James, does the ad hoc committee have a leader? Yes. Right. Um, yes, we do have a chair. That's uh, Dennis Stedman, I think is his last name. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, right. he's he's reached out to the Patterson Farm Committee too. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> probably so, be on that Zoom call also. Um, so you know, I'm not. I'm not running that group. That's that. That's other people. And as I said, there is kind of a little bit of a, of a, of a different direction within that group in terms of um, whether someone's living in the house or someone's not. But that's other than that. The fact that these people are interested at all is really to be valued and cherished because they're not going to be around forever, and they've got amazing skills. So um, they really have to be utilized the best that they possibly can be. James, what does your um, scholastic schedule look like? Um, so as of right now, I leave at the end of the month. Um, I'm going to start uh, October 4th, I think it is. So, um, but I will have 
I will be able uh, available at this time, you know, at, at night um, for anything. If you're willing to to still do virtual meetings, or I, I'm actually I was talking to Joe a little bit about this, but I'm going to email the township and um, see what they're able to work out because I am still resident in uh, the township. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I'll I'll be sending them an email and I'll I'll let you know when I follow up when they follow up you know, on that. <laughs> okay, that's that's good. And we, again, Joe, we got to get some more members. So, so that's I think, think moving on. So one last thing, um, James, I will send you this presentation and you can share that with Dennis. And if he wants me to address them in terms of what kind of an introduction to the Keystone Grants, I'd be happy to do that, right? You know, and, and then, Joe, from my last application to the Keystone Grant, I, I have all the history section and significance for the Sutterthwaite House already done. Yeah. I've so, already made that application. They had no problem with that last time. Right. And then I think, Helen, you and I could look at other, like these other ideas that you have right. and put them together and, and approach the you know, Board of Supervisors to see if they'd be willing to do that. Okay, sounds like a plan. Do we okay. have any new, new business? We just discussed the Keystone Grants action, so we got that done. Uh, do you have anything to report as a commissioner, Joe? As a commissioner? Yeah, you know, something in no, history I that have you've nothing, noticed. I have, no, because I haven't been there. So I'll come back. I come back October first. Uh, it looks beautiful in Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Snuggler's Notch. It really when you put up that picture, it's like, oh, I know where that is. <laughs> Fantastic, uh, James. How about yourself? So you're you're leaving at at the end of September. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you. Just, oh, how far are you going? I'm going abroad. I'm going to Cambridge in the UK. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations wow. to you. You'll love it. I have friends in Norfolk if you need to go over there. Maybe. I've never been to, it's in Northern England, right? Um, yeah, it's just Northeast of Cambridge. Um, you can get there on the train. And this guy um, actually was, worked for the, for Monty Python. So the, the large rabbit is in his yard. You should really, um, yeah, if, <laughs> if you're going, I'll give you his e email and um, he's really interesting person. Sure. Uh, the one place I do want to go at some point is to visit like the small town of Yardley. That's the yes. North. <laughs> yes. That's that's to the northwest. I actually went to Macclesfield two years ago and took mm. the, the the landscape looks exactly like here. It's it's huh. phenomenally similar. But you have to go to Sutton Hoo, of course. Mm. Sutton Hoo is in Suffolk, which is due east, mm -hmm. and the Viking stuff is so cool there. I mean, you're, you're in archaeology too, so you yeah. enjoy that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, maybe when visiting. I'm jealous. I'm, I miss it. I wish I was going, um, but that's, you'll have, you'll have a ball. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. If anybody has something else. Uh, I mean, the recruitment of new members. So the, since we're talking yeah. about all the met James is going overseas, right? You know, how ha, have we posted? Ha, I'm trying to remember, Helen, did you post something on Facebook? About I was going to, but I decided right. not to at that point in time because I wasn't sure whether what was going to be doing the Historical Society um, stuff full time or not. So, and in the meantime, I've been hit with this stuff literally from my dissertation in 2008 that's come back to haunt me so all of a sudden i'm giving presentations to high school students all over berks county and allentown diocese so mm -hmm. that's interesting but you know it is it is kind of pulling me in that direction too mm -hmm. um i'll get back to it i know i have to call jennifer and get it set up and see what's what's happening to our historical society and um get it get it reconstituted um, I do have use of the chapel at Edgewood, um, which is a nice little place to meet. So um, it has a bathroom and has a kitchen. Um, there, it needs chairs, uh, but it certainly could be set up for small public trans, uh, presentations uh, other than, you know, we could also do it at the township um, 
community center. So we could certainly set up some of those slide shows and invite the public. I, I do much better when there's feedback from people that are looking at my slides and and um, we could certainly tape that. And I think they have facilities to tape at the uh, community center. Oh, if so you're not, saying instead of just doing it from a Zoom perspective, actually have it in person. That's, that's why not. I mean, yeah, there are yeah, people yeah, yeah, now yeah. who are willing to come out. Right. I'm. I, I've kind of um, just made my peace with the whole COVID thing, and I'm happy to present. I'm more than six feet away from people, and um, I'm happy to do that. So at this point, I think that's probably the way we should go, Joe. But we can talk yeah, after. No, that's, that's a good. That's a good idea because. That's, you know, when it comes to recruiting new members, we, they're the kind of events that we need because we're going right. to get people out there that are interested in the history and we're going to be able to talk to them a little bit about what we're doing and those types of things, right? I mean, we should, you should, post, you should have something on Facebook anyway if people are interested to contact right. you. I mean, it doesn't hurt to do that. No, this, this idea as many places as we can. Person event. Yeah. I would like to see young people involved. It always bothered me that the Historical Society was so old. Right. Uh, and then at the time I was like the youngest person in it. So okay. now I'm feeling really old. So we really do need to get younger people involved and have them get interested in history again. Yeah. Well, I mean, the younger people, I think you'll get through Facebook. Well, maybe not Facebook, but other social media, right? Well, even I'm very surprised by 15 and 16 year olds who are really interested. No one has really told them about where they live and who was here and they really seem to enjoy it. So why not? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great way to, like you were talking about um, teaching students about how the Native Americans who lived here actually, like what their lives were like. And I think that's a really, that's a really appealing kind of thing to take these, these concepts of history that are taught school and really bring them down to love. These people lived where your houses are right now. You know, or yeah. the, the the Revolutionary War was fought right here. Here's my cannonball. I actually have one. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, um, the 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 thing that was interesting when I talked a lot about Lake Afton and how Lake Afton was originally most likely an um, uh, an indigenous people's beaver hunting ground, where they actually created that lake, allowing the beavers to build the dam, and then harvested these the beavers that's what you see all over the streams that lead down to the delaware and then later the english come in and say oh look at this nice little pond let's just wall it in and we can use it as a mill race you know mill a mill pond for them and put a mill just down below it which is what happened in yardley that's how we got lake afton so oh, it is it is really it's kind of neat to think about that Okay. Okay. Um, oh, how about a motion to adjourn? Oh, we have to talk about next meeting. Um, there, they want us. Katie said, if we wish to meet in person, that we can do it at 9:30 in the morning. We can bring James in on. Um, let me see. What time would it be over in Cambridge? Nine o'clock. It would be um, in the afternoon in Cambridge. About we could do hours. that. Mm -hmm. And have you call in? Um, you know, on a, um, say, a WhatsApp or something like that. Is that going to work for Barbara? Whatever would work. Well, you'd be there in, in phone. And then if someone wants to ask you a question, they could. Because <laughs> we would yeah. be, yeah, we would be open to the public, anybody that wanted to come at 930 in the morning. Um, it, it has worked in the past in the commission. They have no problem with us being there at the township building at 930 in the morning. So that's the issue. Or do we want to continue to do Zoom at night? Are you going to be back in October, Joe? Oh, October yes. we can't do. We have to do November. Right. So we're talking about November because we have to, they want every other month. What works for Barbara? Um, I think mornings would work better than days, than nights for Barbara. Yeah. Okay. So what would you think? Let's look at November... Let's, I, I can't do Tuesdays. That's my only problem. The November 15th or November 22nd? November 22nd would be, would be great, yeah. Okay, was that okay with you, James? It's probably the week of Thanksgiving. Are you coming home or not? I will not be home for Thanksgiving. 
um, my favorite holiday. But uh, oh, I will have it. to check with my class schedule. I, I literally just got it today, so I haven't had time to put it in my calendar yet. But um, I think I should be fine. I don't think I have any classes at 2 o'clock. I might have one at 3. But Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, so I think you're five hours ahead or yeah. five hours behind. Yeah. So, yeah, that that would probably work. Okay, uh, let's tentatively do um, Monday, um, November 22nd, and I'll tell Katie that, and we can get that um, sent over. I'll contact Barbara and ask her to send the official uh, minutes, or I'll send them myself, or, or else, I mean, Katie's probably already seen them, but I'll get them to her. Okay, a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Thank you, James, for coming. Good luck with that hey. committee. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Keep us informed. Yep. All right. Bye, Take care. Thanks, everyone.